the energy on stage is usually created by whatever sort of energy is in the crowd. The best drug is still not as good as that. And it takes you to another place. Wait, I can't You know, I, I live to be on the road. I love it. You know, it's, it's good to have focused touring. Uh, you know, it's hard to play those shows that, you know, when, when there's nobody there. But at the same time, you're surrounded by your, your best friends and you get to, you know, play music for a, a, you know, a short while, even if, it, if it's not the best of circumstances. What is it, the five steps of grief or something? <laughs> uh, like walking into a, a place that even though it turned out to be amazing at, that, that spot in Greenville, but when you walk in and there's no stage and you see that you're playing like a four foot by five foot area and there's beer on the floor already and like <laughs> way too many people in the way, you know, you kind of just go through denial and frustration and like then eventually acceptance. But, um, you know, you play a smaller place, it's going to be more of a rock show, I think. You either have people standing right in front of you and you know, they're dancing or drinking and bumping into microphones, but it's fun to be, you know, face to face with people in an environment where they're kind of packed in and it just creates a totally different kind of excitement. We'll play large venues and not really have, you know, a crowd suitable to fit that venue. And so that can be kind of weird, but you know, it all depends basically on the crowd. The size of the venue doesn't really matter. It just depends on who's there and how they respond to what you're doing. Can I get a hell yeah? Playing like a hometown show or any show in North Carolina and walking away from it and having the crowd be excited and and excited ourselves, it's it's um it's it's a high, really, it is. To have people sing along and and you know, just dancing without and with abandon I guess is kinda the my favorite thing to see that, you know, the beat and the chords that we're creating are truly like you know resonating in somebody is that's wonderful when we when we play an awesome show it feels it's 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 hard to compare it to anything else i do a lot of recordings for people and with this band and, and such but like live performance is really what gets me there My favorite part about tour managing Holy Ghost Tent Revival would be definitely the guys. You know, there's, I've been in the music industry for a while, and in my opinion, there's no six greater guys to travel the country with. When we're all a big group, we kind of have a tendency to function as like a, you know, one unit where people kind of do the same things, you know, Stephen leads the way, and... Hank looks up things on his phone or whatever. You know, they call me Mama Murray. Uh, I was raised by like four older sisters and a mother, so I tend to worry and like, or like make breakfast or call everyone and make sure that they're on, gonna be on time, even though, I, you know, so I, I kind of get made fun of a little bit for being a little overprotective or <laughs> his motherly or something like, like that, but... Um, if a beer could come this way, I just need to wet my, this, oh, yes. my whistle. Maybe a couple beers. You know, we got... I mean, we're all so different. Like, we, we got Hank, who pretty much doesn't say anything 98% of the time. Charlie, who is seven years younger than all of us, who kind of brings us back to life you know, when we're a little down the dumps or like a little distant about the future or whatever, you know, it's just his youth. It reminds us that, you know, we used to be that age and used to think smashing light bulbs in the street was fun. Um, you know, Matt's very serious and very headstrong and stubborn as shit and very 
hilarious dude. And then Kevin, you know, is wonderful, one of the probably the best musician you know, that I've come across. But he also is like, what's that hypochondriac where like he feels a pain in his stomach and then he's like, I'm dying. I go through that a lot. And uh, at least Ross is, you know, he, he's pretty zen. He's pretty straightforward, dude. I think, and th I mean, it just works out. We it all levels out. When I joined the band, um, I didn't know any of these guys really, and the first thing I did pretty much was go on a five-week tour. They were like, we need a trumpet player for five weeks, we'll teach you the songs on the road, it'll be fun, you're young, you'll drink underage, we'll hang out, it'll be great. You know, we're, we're almost at a nirvana right now, you know, if it weren't for, you know, van problems or whatnot, uh, we'd probably be, uh, you know, in the heavens of friendship, I would call it. It's it's kind of a big love fest. We're, uh, we're friends, we're buds, we're... Brothers, family. Some nights, uh, our songs are, you know, totally different. Ross, our drummer, he plays every song differently every night. There's never, you know, he never does it one way consistently. So it just depends on the night. We can try and go into any gig and say, we're gonna play our best. But there's no way to get around the fact that our moods are gonna reflect whatever the audience is feeling and vice versa. Uh, when I first discovered uh, and met Holy Ghost Tent Revival, they were very roots, very Americana, very high energy. I would say the one thing they kept through the transition is the energy. That's still there, that's still pure, and, and I think that translates to audiences. Uh, but the sound has definitely changed. Now they're playing 60s and 70s rock and roll with horns. Uh, it's a very vintage slash modern sound, whereas before it was, you know, take your, take, put on your boots and, and go dancing. And now I feel it's kind of an audiophile's dream. It's, it's the what happened to rock and roll uh, question that people ask all the time. There are no more rock and roll bands. I, I, I feel that's coming back in Holy Ghost Tent Revival. I'd be happy if they were leading the charge on that. Well, we enjoy making the music and living the life, and I think that um, people should be able to enjoy peeking into that a little bit. Part of the joy of art is kind of getting to learn a little something about the the people who make it. What I hope the future is for Holy Ghost Ten Revival is that they hold on to the love of the music. You know, that's that's what they've always been doing it for. That's why my job is so easy because they're not trying to be the next Aerosmith. They're just trying to night by night make as good a music as possible and be out there giving their all to audiences and putting on a great show. Uh, what was the question? Mm -hmm.